Right, good morning, everybody. Uh, it is eight o'clock, bright and early. Uh, welcome to University Life. Um, so we will start this morning's session uh, of orientation for first year students in the College of Agriculture, Engineering and Science. Uh, just to say that we had an orientation session yesterday and we were overwhelmed by the response and we reached a limit of participants. So though it was screened online, we decided to have another session today uh, because we want to do as much as we can to make you feel welcome at UKZN. So uh, I will talk you through what happened yesterday, but I think let's start with a word from our Dean of Teaching and Learning, Professor Naveen Chetty, uh, who is ultimately responsible for your academic journey and success here at UKZN. So Naveen, over to you. Good morning, Dr. Frost, thank you. Colleagues, students, good morning. Welcome to the start of your journey. Uh, it's the first day of your choice of being at the College of Agriculture, Engineering and Science, and an excellent choice that you've made. UKZN is one of the top universities in the country and in the world. We, we rank in the top 500 universities in the world. But also more than that, we are an institution in, in, in the College of Agriculture, Engineering and Science. We are living the motto of striving for greatness. We intend to give you the best possible education we can together with the best possible journey in your academics. You've made the right choice in being with the best college in the university. Um, and I'm saying that unashamedly. We, we will hope to give you a, a, a key to your education that is not just simply uh, book knowledge, but to prepare you for the lifetime that you have to work in the working world and become a productive member of society. In all that we do, our ultimate goal is to enhance you, empower you, and enable you to become productive members of society uh, so that you may contribute meaningfully to not only South Africa, but worldwide through the economy, through whatever choices you make in your working world. We would like to welcome you here. Normally we would do this in person, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we're doing it differently. But rest assured that you will still get the same world-class treatment that we would give you in a contact basis. Although our lectures are online, our academics have been working uh, really hard to give you a good uh, feel for what it's like to work on the, to get to, to agriculture, engineering, and science through the online modes. You will visit us for practical, so you'll get to experience the world-class facilities that I keep saying. Uh, and, and also for the fact that you will get to start your journey with us on a road to success. But no, this road is not going to be easy. It may have bends, it might, it might have potholes. You know, we live in South Africa, potholes are a norm. And you may find yourself sometimes saying, why did I ever choose this? Or why am I in this place? Because it's so difficult. But the saying goes that nothing comes easy. However, in AES, although your times may be tough, we will make sure that whatever help we can provide to you, we will. Our college spends an inordinate amount of money on extra support. So in, in school, some of you may have been, afford, uh, been able to afford going for extra tuition. You were able to get extra helping classes, but some of you weren't able to do that. However, at the university, we do provide you with extra support, free of charge. And those happen during your after hours, during weekends. And you'll hear more about that as you progress through this morning's presentation. But just make the most of what you have. When you come to the, to the college, Make sure you engage with your academics, that you engage with your work, and that you give it off your best. I would wish you the best uh, of luck. For joy, uh, thank you for joining us. Wish you the best of luck, and hope that I see you in three years' time graduating. Thank you all very much. Over to you, Dr. Frost. Uh, thanks very much, Naveen. Right. Uh, before we get going, I just want to direct you all to our orientation website, which will answer a lot of your questions. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, right. If it's not sharing, can one of the panelists just let me know, but I think it should be sharing. So this is a good place. If you have lots of questions, this is a good place to start. It's uh, caes.ukzn.ac.za slash orientation. And if you go through this site, you will find all sorts of useful information. Uh, there's a welcome from our Deputy Vice Chancellor, the head of the college, Professor Albert Modi. And then we have several very useful videos. Uh, this video here is yesterday's session. So if you want to watch that, uh, you can click on that link and you can hear what we said yesterday. Um, 
today will be pretty much a repeat of yesterday. So just so that you know that. Uh, we have a video here that orientates you about the whole of the university. And then we have two videos, one in English and one in Zulu that will orientate you specifically for the College of Agriculture, Engineering and Science. So in your own time, please watch these videos. You will find them very useful. Scrolling down further, uh, there's student information. It's been divided into information for if you're studying for an agricultural or a science degree, or if you're studying for an engineering degree. And there's all sorts of information here relevant to your degrees. There's funding, there's ICS, there's curriculum advice, COVID protocols, um, how to set up your timetable. It's all here. Uh, then other student resources from our student support services, a whole lot of videos. They will be talking to you today. Uh, useful links to uh, other services within the university, for example, library, risk management services, which deals with safety on campus, clinics, which are a free service available to students. Um, there's a list here of frequently asked questions where you can find answers to funding questions, fees questions, registration questions, et cetera. Uh, career development services. Uh, very nice videos here on each campus, Howard College if you're doing engineering or Pete Marisberg and Westfall if you're doing science or agriculture, uh, which will show you what the campuses look like um, because currently because of COVID access is limited. Then there are contact lists of people who can help you, further videos. Okay, so please, when you have the time, visit this site. Um, right, I'm going to stop my share. I think that's what I wanted to say about the orientation website. Uh, I'm going to hand over now to Arsi Latuli, who is from our academic administration department. And she's going to take you through the registration process. So Arsi, if you can maybe share your screen so people can see you talking through it and over to you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. We are happy to have you, and we thank you for trusting us with your education. I'm going to just take you through um, the registration process, but still, if you are still stuck, we are all, all the college offices are always available to assist you. Firstly, my step one you will please go to the university website, uh, ukzn.ac.za students, and then click on the site and go to Student Central uh, entry under Discovery UKZN. You will enter your student number and click on proceed. However, I do know that a lot of us here are new and therefore they will request they don't have PIN. So this is what you're going to do to get a PIN. Uh, the next screen, you must enter your student number and your PIN. And if you don't have it, as I said, as a new student, you need to click request a PIN. And the PIN will be sent to you on your cell phone via SMS. Now, it's very important that if you feel maybe you've changed the number, uh, because obviously the pin will go to the old number. You, you need to let us know so that we can change it back office. Once you've received the pin, go back and enter your student number, uh, type in your pin and click log in. Uh, click change pin. So it will give you um, a generic pin. And then once you, cha you click ch um, change pin, it will, you will then be prompted to create a new pin and click on continue. Once you have finished, you will then click on self-help registration and continue and then click on web, UKZN web registration. Step two. You will click on UKZM web uh, registration and the first thing that is going to prompt you are the rules and regulations of the university. And I'm just going to uh, show you here on my uh, left hand side. 
So this is where this uh, menu is very important because you need to um, do certain things before you go on to new registration. So you will, you will read, please make sure you read our rules and regulations. And then once you are happy, uh, accept the document and then you will, or else you will not be allowed to proceed. So you will click on this side, um, click uh, rules and regulations, and then you must accept them. Step three, once accepted, you need to then validate your address. You can see here, again, we started with the rules and regulations. And once you accept, it will move down to address validation. If there's a change in your address or anything, you need to change it here. And then it will update where necessary. Step four, click on the detail, uh, on the contact details uh, link. Now here, this is where if you feel you need to change your cell phone number, you, you can also do that as well. Check your contact details. Please ensure that your email and your cell phone number are correct as these will uh, remain our main form of communication between the university and you. So this part is very important because if this is incorrect, we cannot get hold of you in, uh, if, if we need to do that uh, urgently. Step five. Now, this is the most interesting part. As you become, you know, legitimate to become our student, you must follow these steps. Click on new registration link. If you have multiple possible qualifications available, you will have multiple um, possible qualifications uh, available to you you will then need to select the most appropriate. So for example, there'll be different types of, um, if you see here, there'll be different types of uh, major and uh, it can be uh, engineering in civil, it can be one of the science uh, degrees. You need to click where it's appropriate to you. This is very important because if you click the incorrect one, it will show you an inc incorrect uh, subjects available to you. So you need, to, the first step is very important. Step six, ensure that the qualification displayed is correct. Select your majors. If you required and your employer statement, uh, status, uh, you can then click on save and then continue. This button, it, these two buttons are very important because if you feel you've made a mistake in your selection in the previous screen, you can always restart the process again and then choose the correct parameters. Once you are happy, you can then click save and continue. Step seven. Now select your modules. Keep in mind the rules as per a group of modules and the total credits for the year. But obviously you will be getting uh, some sort of uh, academic uh, advice. Uh, so it was going to be easy in terms of which modules you need to select. The system will generate errors if, for example, you have. The only errors that I anticipate for this type of group will be probably international, if you are an international student, or fee hold. Now, you need to make sure at this stage as, uh, that you would have paid in your registration fee so that you will be cleared so that there is no, uh, you don't have any sort of uh, hold. Because if you don't have financial hold, your registration will not go through. Okay. And so this is the screen where you choose your, 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 your preferred modules, right? And then you need to click uh, on save and continue. If you feel you need to go back to the previous screen, you can at this stage as well, restart the process. Step eight, as I mentioned to you, if there's any 
any hold, it will prompt you there. But you will not have holds because you are. I trust that everyone is uh, is got financial uh, clearance, and therefore you will not have any issues. But if you do have any issues, our offices are available to assist you around around the clock. Step nine: click on approval. You must capture some comments that may assist the academic in granting you approval. Once you click submit and get a message indicating that the, um, the message has been forwarded, you may log out and wait for the email advising you of the status of your request. If your request, if your request was rejected, now this can be uh, this could be maybe you didn't uh, select the right modules or what. So the academic at the end will reject your 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 your, your registration. So that is why I'm I'm appealing to you that make sure that you select the uh, the the correct. Um, degree and the correct module so that you don't get a uh, registration uh, rejected. And then you, you'll be prompted to click re uh, request registration approval. Step 10, once request approval has been um, successfully made on your selection of your modules, you'll be redirected to a screen where you'll, uh, you, you may be, uh, you need to upload your documents. So at this point, we require your statement, we require your, your ID for new students. So you need to please upload them for us. We need to have these in, in, in our system. And then once you've uploaded it, it you need to, uh, scroll down to the bottom of the page and then you click on submit. Now, once you do that, the college office will then be able to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to approve your submissions. And once you finish that, right, you will move on to step seven, right? You will then be presented uh, with a screen showing the cost of your registration. Click on accept registration to finalize your registration. So now if we just, uh, let me just um, theorize it. You can see all the modules here. So you would have clicked everything and these are the total cost and this is your total. And once you see this, you know you are heading in the right direction. And once, immediately you will then be prompted to accept registration. But at this point, if you feel maybe you didn't add a module or two, you are welcome to restart the process and follow the prompts again. But if you are happy with uh, the selection of modules, you will then click accept registration. A pop-up message will come through. You have successfully completed your registration. Please log out and proceed to RMS for your student card. Now you are a University of KwaZulu Natal student, and you belong to the College of AES. And then, once you finish this, don't be alarmed. This is your proof of registration. You can print it for your own records, um, but it will also show you all the modules that you've registered for. Thank you. Thank you. And we do are very, in fact, we are very happy to have everyone here. And as I said, if you are in doubt and you need any assistance, please do not feel you can, we cannot assist you. Let us know. We can, we can, uh, um, we can try and assist you via, via email. Even if you phone us on Teams, we are available. And welcome to uh, UKZN in the College of AES. You are now going to become our new babies and we are your moms and dads and thank you. Thanks very much, Arcee. I would love to have you as my mummy. You are very, very mummy type. Okay, um, I'd like to call on Shelley Barnsley, who is the manager of Student Support Services. Um, we pride ourselves as a college that we do look after our students and make sure that everything is, place, is in place for you to succeed academically and uh, that the rest of your life is taken care of. So Shelley, uh, over to you. 
Thank you very much, Sally, and greetings to everyone on the floor, and especially a big welcome to our new students. Um, very great to have you here today. Um, my name is Shirley Barnsley. I'm the manager of student support services in our college. What this means is that we offer student counseling. So I'm going to be talking to you today a little bit about the services we offer and how you can access our services. I know at the moment that you're very busy dealing with registration issues, timetable issues, accommodation issues, and so on. Um, so I, I hope that you'll still listen to this because there may come a time where you uh, find that you're struggling with the transition from school to university. We know it's not a very easy transition. Um, and that especially with the online learning environment that you will find yourself in because you will have online learning for the first semester. And we are here to help you with any kinds of uh, issues, psychological, psychosocial issues that you might have uh, making that transition. Uh, for us, you all matter, and we are we want to make your journey as smooth as possible. We want you to succeed, and uh, we will do everything in our power to, to walk this journey with you to help you to succeed. So I just want to share my screen because I have a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, just give me a moment to um, get it up. Mm. Sally, am I, um, am I visible? Yes, you're visible and big. That's good, Shelly. Okay, perfect. Right. So these are the kinds of services we offer. We have very highly qualified uh, staff members. So these are psychologists um, who are registered with the Health Professions Council of South Africa and interns, and we also have student development officers. We are based on the Westville campus in the OR Tambo building, which is on the uh, on the fourth floor, on Howard College campus on the Desmond Clarence uh, third floor, and in Peter Maritzburg on the ground floor of the admin building. Currently, all our counseling is done online due to the COVID-19 um, pandemic. So, um, uh, you, you know, you will, I'll take you through the process of how to access counseling online. Don't be afraid of, of doing counseling online. I know it might be new for many of you the whole system might be new but I can assure you that it works very well uh, you make a booking online and then we send you a zoom link um, and you join us via zoom um, and uh, most students find it a very pleasant experience a very easy experience so don't be don't be put off by the fact that it is online our counselling is free and confidential. This is very important. We are not going to be uh, telling your parents what you say or your friends or your lecturers or anyone else for that matter. So you can be assured of confidentiality. Um, your, your private concerns are, are, are safe with us um, and you are protected by the legislation of the Health Professions Council. Also, very importantly, this is a free service offered to you, KZN students. It's a service that you would pay a lot for if you were um, getting it privately. So please do make use of it because it's a wonderful service that's available to you. We also offer counseling in English and EC Zulu. So if you prefer to speak in EC Zulu, we do have counselors available who can speak EC Zulu. These are the services that we offer. So we offer individual counseling and psychotherapy. And that could be for any kind of psychological or psychosocial issues. So depression, anxiety, relationship problems, family problems, gender-based violence, um, anything that might be troubling you and that's, you know, causing a, a, a distress for you or causing you to struggle with and focus on your academics, please come and get help. Um, the, the help is available and there's absolutely no shame in seeking help. It does not say that you, it doesn't mean that you are crazy. It does not mean that you are weak. It simply means that you are uh, making an effort to make sure that you live your blessed life and get the help that you need. We also do academic risk assessments, and this is um, refers to our LECR, which is the last tab on, on my screen. And what this is, is this is for students who are not coping. Uh, we have this checklist which identifies barriers to academic success. If you are not coping and you fail modules and you go from uh, being uh, green, which is good academic standing, to being at risk, 
um, then you will it will be compulsory for you to do the learning enhancement checklist and consult with us so that we can try and help you to 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 um, find what's what's going on and try and help you to fix what's going on so that in the end you end up passing. Um, then we also do psychological assessments. So for example, if you feel that you are very slow at reading and writing, and that might be due to a neurological condition, or you have a disability and you feel that you need extra time in your tests and exams, please consult us and we can do a neuropsychological assessment to assess whether you qualify for extra time. Crisis management, um, unfortunately, there are a lot of crises, lots of traumas that happen, um, and we are available to help you with crisis. We also offer a very good service in group work and group psychotherapy. We have a number of excellent support groups available. The ones that are the most popular that we offer are the um, student mothers support group, where you can meet with other student mothers and share your experiences. We also have a depression support group, um, as well as a gender-based violence support group, and also a support group to cope with online learning and studying. In addition to that, we have life skills workshops. So we, we offer you a range of workshops on stress management, time management, um, budgeting, nutrition, career decision making, and so on. Um, and I would encourage you to make use of our website. Uh, we have some very nice videos, some very nice skills that you can and resources that you can look at um, on these various issues. But during the course of the year and during the first year experience program, we will be showing you and 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 taking you through some of these life skills workshops. We also have uh, offer study skills. Um, it's, it's quite a new way of learning at university, a lot of independent learning, um, and we will help you navigate study skills. Um, moving on then, um, this is just um, some information about our staff and how you can contact us. Um, so these are where you can find us, um, although we are not offering face-to-face -face counseling at present, it's still online. Um, so these are our Peter Maritzburg uh, student development offices, and you will meet Saneli Zuma just now. Um, and our interns, and these are Howard College student counselors, and all this information will be available to you. Um, and these are our Westville student counselors um, and their email addresses. So how do you go about making an appointment to see a counselor? It's a very easy, simple process. So you go online to this website, you do a once-off registration where you fill in your details, um, and then you can make a booking from anywhere at any time for our services, and you can also cancel or change your bookings. You will also receive a confirmation once your booking has been accepted, and then you will receive reminders of your appointment via email. As I've said, it just takes place online. I just want to show you our website. This is an excellent website. I really strongly encourage you to visit it um, because it has got all this information that I'm giving you now, plus a load more. Um, and it is a, it, it's a very nice uh, portal for you to get resources. Okay, we are also on Facebook. Here is our Facebook page. So please follow us on Facebook because we post some very interesting things on Facebook. Um, I just want to give you some contact details. Here is our generic email address, so you can send us any emails and we will try to respond to your queries. Remember that this is for queries related to counseling and psychological, personal psychotherapy. It, unfortunately, we are not able to help you with registration queries. Those need to be di directed to the college office. If you have got uh, queries regarding your curriculum, then those need to be directed to your academic leaders or your ADOs, and you'll hear about that just now. If you have accommodation queries, you need to direct those to uh, the Department of Student Residence, which you'll also hear about just now. We do have a toll-free line, so if you have no airtime, don't worry, you can phone us. Here is our toll-free line number. Please put it in your phone, and this is uh, operates Monday to Friday from eight o'clock to half past four. Here is our website, which I've already told you about, which is very important. And here is our booking address again for you so that you can make bookings. Also, as I said, we are on Facebook and also Instagram. So please find us on social media. Um, 
I just want to give you also a few emergency contacts. So sometimes these emergencies occur after hours. If you do have a psychological emergency after hours, please contact RMS, which is a 24 hour um, service for you. But there are some other um, helplines if you don't want to uh, use our in-service uh, services. Um, and these also are available. Some of these are available 24 hours. The one I want to draw your attention to in particular is this National Health University Students Crisis Line, please put this number in your phone. Um, it is free for all university students and is available 24 hours. There is also a suicide helpline, so if you or any of your friends or anyone you know is struggling with suicide um, and suicidal ideation, which is a very serious thing, then please give them this number. We also have another other, a number of other um, resources that you can make use of, and this will all be available to you um, on our portal. Um, just in, before I hand over to Sunil, I just want to say that um, really what our research has shown and our experience over many, many years has shown that students that seek help are the ones that do better than those who don't seek help. Please seek help. Um, as I said, there's nothing shameful about it. And we really are there. You'll find that we're very uh, warm, very nurturing. We're not here to judge you. Um, and we, we are here to, to help you as best as we can and to facilitate your adjustment to university. So please don't be shy. Please don't suffer in silence. There is help available and we are ready and waiting to, to help you. I would now like to hand over to Sanele Zuma, who will explain to you a little bit about what I've said in EC Zulu. Sanele? Thank you so much, Shelley. Uh, good morning, colleagues. It's been a little number fun. Yeah, briefly, maybe for just two minutes. Uh, so abaning benu bakamuge kole ni la uno tisha uno principal pelela la university ina bandu eba kasha lugu tinge bakbambi sandra which ni ya koyok funda la university kuzo no ma inle efunu paza mesuk funda wako ube na banda bazo konu kuksiza ukuzwe utolele ndo ifunai so baksiza ngogwe kabe ndatu wako kala nje siksiza Quizimo on a pegana naso, empilue. Sningi is in the stress ironist and as the shumes a moyen as a condren. On Latima would always attend this Latina Gempella noma umundo shagan pila of tenu ascends the last school. So in the nano my eping king on an eye. I can mane, I can gulu. We are was who's a tina and the mouse a tina gone who should choose all cock and your fire is a sick amateur. Sia spigele lugu shuti sa zamangu. Kakoko nko kse manje nugu shuti. No misi mwasa kwa singe nshi nje kodwa. We are wazu kopa na. So we are wazi kubegu pase la ma testo wako. We are wazu kubegu pase la ma exemo wako. We are wazu pumele la yize. Tupega nena. Because ningo ngenze la. Njonga angishwa guko ngana guko kulu. Nigui eja ma feelings. Na ma relationship abu ya nenze njalo. Makaya. Subway slash lege lwa bandu. So nge lezi zinte zine potential yugu. Spaza me. So mwenye uka adjusta nje. So kuningi basically. Iskaba sasu bila siza ngaso. Ile sise kera canceling. Nzo kukuza la kulo kushuti. Niksugu mele. Ugzo ufuno sizo. Ma ubo ono kushuti. Le dikri ogi ona. Ay. Au na isho ngayo. Or because I'm an amateur creel, like I and a maca mamnand, in some ways, since that way, who has week a major visa, I shall go to a on a lulu as Olane Lengayo, on a show who should intake fanele, on a show who should be a pinayo, or Munyagas as an who should be in and fanel. So, see, offer issues is a lie. So, I will really appeal to you to make use of that. Ogunya guesses is an arc. Wouldn't you young a maconoc phone? Waba university tagi yoni ndao yo krema. Ya wawwe since kati. Esko leni mama une memore gase nje. Ugwa zubamba gase. Ubu ise gongo bukche liwe. Kululu uba iska yungo patla. Sebe funa u understand izi ndo. So nende la yo kufunda izo tandu kufuga kina lo ito ayel. So wawwe since kati uzo puma gagin beg vumil. Betu yinku unzi. Mawusufi alamsa mba after test one. Ay ubona ngati izi ndasambi gase. 
Suguma, Peggy and Nelo, Shutofunda, and Io, Yenzaga, and Suez Conugu Sizanalok. Tizel and Genoa, Desho Ushele, Uti Abandabal Abatatele, Lituba, Balsabens, Seleli, Lulusis, Ramal, Old Vigelegil, and Wabaga Connessing Cocola, and Gessi Cocca now, as a Cocca and Jiglas in Dongaze to Salala, Futi Usuges and Zeluxiza, and Rashegas. So, say as the Gagwin Lemyama is into the cancelling a yonder joy legula cool, but he Ukumbule Lorenzo Wusho Manch Uguti University Yating Uguti Ube Nesandos Bamba. Amba found a Sebe Pumile Laba graduate Tabas of Child Wushuti. You need some kind of support when you are here. So, Unga Shali Zignet to wait because say as Wushuti is into. Ziabanzi Mawesin's cat in Bilo Egibe, Enyindo, and Uzobanzi Mushu Tugwazi, Kube Pumelele, Ungas is almost. So, on that note, thank you very much and uh, welcome to all of you to KZN, and we look forward to seeing you. Thanks, Shelley and Sally. Thanks very much, Sonele. Uh, okay, Sonele has been telling you about. Uh, student life, how to be a student. So I'd like to call on Intercourse with Ladler, who was a student here at UKZN, um, just to share some of her experiences of what it's like to be a student in the College of Agriculture, Engineering and Science. Uh, Intercourse, over to you. Thank you, Sally. Um, okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to give, for giving me this platform. Uh, welcome to the first years. Um, I know you might be nervous, but please don't be because this will be the best three or four years of your life. So you need to savor every moment and try not to be too distracted about everything else and just focus on what's at hand. I want you guys to remember why you're here. Why did you choose this institution? Why did you choose this course specifically that you're doing? And focus on that. There's a lot of things going around that will distract you, that will deter you from your main goal. But the, it's, it's, it's about enjoying the journey, grasping all the information that is there, making sure you use all the facilities that are avail available to you. So go to the student counselors, go to the ADOs, lecturers have um, hours for consultation. Use those. You have mentors, you have um, facilitators. Go to those people, find out how can you study better, how can you improve on yourself. And remember that your journey for you towards your career has already started. The day you sat down and you filled in that application form, that was you making a decision about your life. So it does, it's not gonna start when you're graduating and then you think, oh, what am I gonna do with my, with my life? It started back then. So every day you're working towards getting to where you want to be eventually. So make sure you network, you talk to the right people, uh, you build your career starting now, you build that experience because a lot of places, they want people with qualification and experience. How are you going to get experience if you're only going to start in your third year, if you're only going to start when you graduate, after you graduated? We don't want a situation where graduates are sitting at home and everyone is saying, oh, there's no posts. So please start now, work towards your career. And if you see something is not resonating with you, because sometimes you 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 look at things in hands and, and, and think, okay, I can do this. But when you there and you can see, you know what, this is actually more difficult than I thought. I've been enough more than I, I can chew. Remember to take a step back. You have you have all the, the right to change your mind. There's there's forms that you can take and, and change your degree and choose something else that you know you can you you will love and you will excel in it so my advice to you is enjoy the moment and 
Don't forget the future. Balance your life out. Make sure you study as much as you exercise or have leisure time to just let loose and balance everything else out. And join these societies uh, with certain courses or certain career paths. You need to be part of the society or an organization in order for you to even get your foot into certain interviews. So find out what does your career path need in order for you to get to move forward. To So don't limit yourself. Work hard, play hard. And remember, this is the one college where we don't have leisure time. Yo, if, if you thought you're going to get time and you saw those posters where students are sitting by the grass, <laughs> No, not not that not the C's college. Um, there's more prep time though, and more study time. Make sure you study after lectures. You understand the content because once the jacaranda trees have fallen, so once you see those purple flowers all, all over the campus, you must know your time is up. You you already have your DP in order. You know your content because. That's when everything, is, the tests, are, the final test, the, the final submissions are coming through and there's literally no time to play. So engage in everything that is going on around campus, but don't forget why you are here, why you chose this career, where do you want to go with yourself? So yeah, because this is the last time we, you're going to spend four years or three years and people just give you money to to survive or live and 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 and, and learn towards what you want. So that's 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 it for me. Thank you, Sally. Thanks very much, and Koza. And Koza's got lots of experience. She was a student here for a long time. So listen to her wise words. All right, I'm going to move on. Um, Bobby, if I can call on you just to start talk our students through academic monitoring and support that they'll receive while they are here. Thank you, Dr. Faust. Thank you for this opportunity. Good morning, everyone. I see some of you were here yesterday and uh, nonetheless, we're happy that you're back again. But for all those who are here for the first time, um, welcome to the College of AES, and um, we are happy that you are here to listen to us, uh, to the different departments, different sections in the college that will make your life easy while you are in the university. So I'm today morning going to talk to you about academic monitoring and support. This is over and above the normal lectures and tutorials that you have. There are various structures in place in the university that will assist you in enhanced learning and peer learning, um, uh, collaborative learning. So let me share my presentation. All right, so I'll try to keep my uh, presentation very short as there are many presentations that will be made today. Um, but my short talk showcases one very important aspect uh, and that is that we take our students across the access program and the mainstream programs very seriously so you are very important stakeholders in our institution and we make every effort to ensure that no one is left behind so even if you are struggling academically we have systems in place structures in place that will assist you we follow a very holistic approach to ensure uh, that each student is uh, not just a number, but every student is integral to our university and our college. So why is academic monitoring and support important? This actually stems from the academic monitoring and exclusion policy of the university, which emphasizes student retention in the university and increasing throughput using a variety of academic development programs. So it also involves identifying uh, underperforming students or students who are struggling in their academics uh, on time so that interventions can be put in place to assist the students uh, to complete their degree 
uh, together with other students. However, that doesn't mean that uh, good students or students who are doing well in the academics cannot attend this program. Everybody is invited to attend this program. So stemming from the academic monitoring and exclusion policy, support policy and the exclusion policy is a color coding system, uh, which is based on the academic performance of the student in every semester. And this is commonly called as the robot system. So a student with uh, exceptional academic performance is given a blue color code. I mean, you will, you will come to see after every semester and, and you will come across this robot system and the various terms on this robot system uh, many times during your stay in the university. A student who is on good academic standing, I mean, passing 75% uh, of the modules on time every semester, they will be coded as green color, which is good academic standing. And those who uh, are not passing their sufficient modules on time every semester, they will be coded as orange, which is risk. And if you underperform, then you are given a color coding of red color. And uh, when all interventions fail and students continue to not perform, they are excluded from the university. So that means that good academic performance is required for every semester. So this is a flow chart um, for the academic monitoring and exclusion policy flow chart, which I'm showing you here. The color coding and the different term decisions are given after every semester. As you all are new to this degree, you're starting your degree, you will be considered in good academic standing. That is green, which you can see here on the screen. And based on your academic performance in the first semester, your color coding will be decided to stay on green or to go on to orange and suitable interventions will be put in place if it is required. So we are aware that you will take some time to adjust to the university um, in whichever school you belong to. Um, as you would see that your degree and qualifications or majors, they will belong to one of these five schools. We have the School of Life Sciences, which has qualifications in life sciences. Uh, we have School of Chemistry and Physics, which runs the applied chemistry and chemistry majors. We have School of Mathematics, Statistics and Computer Science, which has qualifications of applied maths, pure maths, uh, data science, statistics, computer science, and so on. And School of Agriculture, Earth and Environment, Environmental Science, which runs uh, programs on environmental science and agriculture. And School of Engineering, where various uh, disciplines of engineering um, qualifications are run. Uh, we have various academic development officers for various schools. You will come across them. Mr. Godfrey Marumure is the ADO in the School of Engineering. Mr. Ashwin Maniwal and Mrs. Lalu Kane, they are both on PMB campus. Uh, they are ADOs there. Dr. Dalia Vargis, uh, Ms. Nyameka Giko, and Mr. Rajan Chibangu. These are ADOs on the Westville campus. So irrespective of which school they belong to, you can consult any one of them and they will direct you to the right person. Um, when you come to the university from, from a schooling background, leaving your homes, staying in a rest, cooking for yourself, cleaning after yourself, doing all the assignments, assessments, um, and practicals and lectures and, and whatnot, Sometimes it is easy that you could feel overwhelmed. But the most important thing is that though university life is a big adjustment, you are not the only one. You are not alone. There are various support programs that is there for you. So these are some of the support programs, a few which I'm, uh, I, I mean, I've put on the screen for you. Supplemental instruction or SI for various modules. There is hot seats on one-to-one -one tuitions, 
uh, writing center, which helps with academic writing, computer literacy, statistical analysis, and so on. We have residence tutorials where uh, tutors who are based in residences that you stay will have residence tutorials in the nighttime. Academic advising for uh, keeping track of your degree. We have different training and workshops run by the ADUs and also by the uh, student support unit. You have already heard from Mrs. Barnsley about that. Uh, we have FY peer mentorship program. Uh, you will be allocated one mentor to uh, a, a small group of students. So you will have your own mentors who will assist you with various issues that you may face. And then you have social psycho counseling, which is run by the student support unit. So let's uh, look at what is supplemental instruction. This is uh, one of our flagship programs in the college. So SI is not, is, is supplemental to normal instructions or lectures. This is out of the lecture times. And these are student-led peer study sessions that focus on high-risk courses and not high-risk students. So if, if a course has a high student enrollment or struggling with results over the past couple of years, then the ADUs institute SI sessions for those kind of modules. So you will be informed from time to time, the modules, uh, many of the first year modules, they do have SI sessions. These are peer collaborative learning sessions and it helps to develop the study skills that can be used in other modules as well. So. Uh, my advice to you is that you must attend these sessions so that you can uh, develop a collaborative learning style with other students in your class. And also you can ask your doubts uh, to the SI leader who is assisting these sessions. Uh, though these sessions are voluntary, we encourage you to take part in the sessions because various analysis have shown that attendance or regular attendance in these sessions help in improving the pass rates of the, of the cohort and the marks that each student achieve. So these are the few tips that can help you to sail through your first year. Uh, please manage your time properly. Um, you do not procrastinate. You, we will have different time management workshops and different workshops from time to time. So manage your time, consider time very precious and study on a daily basis. Do not keep it for the assessments uh, to come so that you will start learning. Study hard and persevere. It's, it's not a one semester or a one year course. Sometimes it takes up to three to four years to complete your degree. Uh, uh, three years for a mainstream and four years for augmented program. So, we expect that you all will complete your degrees on record time. Attend all real-time lectures because the lecturers are not only noted for their knowledge in the field, but they come, they're prepared to assist the student. And what a pity if the student don't turn up. So my, my plea to you is that please attend all lectures. Now there are limited lectures because of online learning. Most of the teaching is... Uh, via Zoom, so you don't have to be on campus, but whenever there is a Zoom lecture, please attend those lectures and, and get your doubts in various areas of concepts cleared from the lecturer. Get help early and often. Always go prepared to lessons, practicals, and tutorials. Don't just um, reach there without even knowing what track you are going to do. I mean, a, a 10 minute, just a brief look out on what practicals or what tutorials you are going to do on a particular day will make such a huge difference in your studies, in your learning ability, because you're not just going blank and trying to absorb right from the start what's happening. And that could make such a good difference. If you fall, if you fail a module, an assessment, or if you struggle with submission, do not give up. Perseverance, as I said, persevere and Stick on to it, get help, speak to your academic development officers, speak to the SSS unit counselors and speak to your wellness mentors. Do not give up. Uh, giving up attitude will not help you. 
and the more you slide down, the more it's difficult to come back. So please stand up every time you feel worn out. Help is at hand. Um, this is the website. You can take a screenshot of this, or you can take a um, take a take your cell phones out and take a picture of this website. All the teaching and learning information, various videos on teaching and learning, um, uh, how to use Moodle, uh, various training workshops. These are all given as videos on this website. The details of various academic leaders, details of various ADOs, various personals in teaching and learning. This is also uh, something that you can find on this website. All right, and this website will also lead you to the registration website as well. So uh, this is important for you. Let me leave you with uh, one very famous saying or proverb uh, that Thomas Alva Edison, the, in, the, the scientist who invented the electric bulb and has more than 1,100 patents to his name. Uh, so rightly said, genius is one person inspiration and 99 person perspiration. So hard work is the key to success anywhere in this life, but more so at UKZN and College of Indians. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, and if you have any doubts, please contact the Indians. Thank you, Chair. Um, thanks very much, Bobby. While I have you on online, um, I've just been monitoring the chat and I just want to confirm registration is open because people are saying it's closed. I've checked with Tracy and she says it is open. If you can just confirm. Yeah, registration opened day before yesterday midnight, but I see on the chat that certain qualifications, students from certain qualification, especially the CSIT, they are saying that registration is not open for them. So I will contact Tracy now and I will ask her uh, and Mr. Kuzwayo to have a look. Um, we have had issues sometimes, you know, where the system shows to the students that it's not open, but they will refresh it and systems are open, registration is open. Thank okay. you. Okay, thanks, Bobby. Um, and also just monitoring the chat, Veryl, if I can call on you, there've been a lot of questions about permits, access to campus, how that works. If you could just explain that. Certainly, thank you, Sally, and welcome students. Um, so as first year students, um, only registered students, and this applies across the board, um, only registered students will be invited to come onto campus. So that's a very, very important point. Um, the other thing is if you are a registered student and you are a resident student, you will automatically be processed to return to campus and you will be allowed to apply for a permit. And this is an online process. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure whether you are aware of the, uh, the link to the online facility, but I will post that in the Q&A. Um, and, but don't apply for a permit now, don't apply for access to campus now because it will be rejected because you haven't been processed yet to return. So, as I said earlier, only registered students may be considered to return to campus at this point. The other very important thing is that because the, acad the academic program for undergraduate and fourth year students only starts on the 14th of February, no invites will be um, made or extended to students at this point. So the invitations to return to campus will be linked to the start of the undergraduate program on the 14th of February, but more specifically, the way that our college is going to be doing it to make things easier for students is that you only really need to come onto campus to attend your first practical session. Um, so what we will do is we are arranging for um, invitations to come onto campus to be linked to when you will be attending your first practical session. So a couple of days before your first prep, you will be processed to return to campus. You will receive a letter of invitation from the college. And in that letter of invitation will be instructions on how to apply for a permit. 
So what is terribly important, students, is that please don't apply for a permit until you've been invited to return because you will get an error message. So the process is you are invited to return to campus on a specific date and students will be having different dates upon which they are invited to return. And as soon as you get that letter of invitation from the college, it will contain instructions and invite you to now apply for your permit. The permit system is very automatic. So what you do is you go online, you go through a short routine online and your permit is generated. The invitation takes a little bit longer. So the other um, extenuating circumstances as to whether students may be invited onto campus earlier than the need to um, attend practicals is if you have extenuating circumstances. And those extenuating circumstances are things like poor connectivity at home, poor internet at home, data issues, and non-conducive home environments. Some students suffer, they're living in very rural areas, um, and sometimes their home environments are not conducive to studying. So we will consider those as extenuating circumstances. So um, I will post in the Q&A the, um, the online address for you to apply for permit. And just remember, unless you have extenuating circumstances, you do not apply now. So I think I've covered everything, Sally. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Veryl. Um, I see we have Nonku online. Um, Nonku, if you can unmute yourself and show yourself. Nonku um, heads up funding in the college. If you can just talk through the process of um, funding and funding fees clearance for students before they can register. <clears throat> Good morning, students. Uh, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Nongkuru Lego. I am responsible for student funding within the College of AES. Uh, the first thing that uh, is very important for, for you guys when you are trying to make payments for your registration is to make sure that you, 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 register, you pay registration at the bank and also send the proof of registration, the proof, the proof of payment to this department, not student funding. So they have email addresses around all over the campuses. They have an email address which is uh, Westfield fees for Westfield students. The email address for Howard, it's Howard fees at ukzn.ac.za, the Maritzburg one has Maritzburg at ukzn.ac.za. Do not send um, your proof of payment to student funding because we are not the one responsible for your clearances. So if ever you pay your registration, make sure that your reference number is your student number so that it would be easy for you to be cleared within three to four days, three to four working days. Then for students who are NESFAS funded, you, you will receive an SMS that would confirm that NESFAS has funded you for 2022. Once you receive that SMS, you can proceed with your registration. For those who have not yet received the SMSs, you have to wait for the next five to five to six working days in order for you to receive that SMS. So you are not going to get any clearance once you receive an SMS confirming that you are funded for 2022. For students who are using uh, external bursaries, you need to send us a letter confirming that you are sponsored by a sponsor APC. They will cover your fees from tuition, accommodation, uh, computer, laptop allowances, and uh, meal allowances to the advisors within your campus. Our office has advisors all over the university. 
all over the campuses. Uh, for students who are registered or who are going to register at Westfield, you must contact Mr. Mkize at Westfield. His contact details are in our website. So you can check our website and contact Mr. Mkize. He will advise you accordingly. For students who are going to register at Howard College, there is a Ms. Mdunge there who will assist you. And also Mr. Gerard Naika who will assist you. You can check their contact details on our website as well. For students who will register at um, Maritzburg campus, you will check the contact details there as well for Maritzburg advisors. Uh, there is Mrs. C Mrs. Heda Singh there and also uh, Marcia Tamonte. Their contact details are on the website as well. For students who are who have received uh, uh, scholarships, you will have to register first in order for you to receive your your scholarship. And also, you have to submit a proof of uh, metric results to our office in order for us to verify your metric. So that process will happen after you have registered. Uh, I think I've covered everything, Sadi. I'm not sure if I'm missing anything. Um, no, thanks very much, Nonku. If you can just go through the Q&A in the chat, because there have been quite a few funding questions and answer the ones that you can see there. Um, there also are some questions on residences. Um, Alsi, are you still here? If you can just explain how the college allocates its residence places. Uh, I'm not sure if we still have Alsi in the room. No, it looks like she's gone. Um, in terms of questions on, on residences, also ICS questions, um, please look at our video from yesterday because the respective people were here yesterday. They're not in our college and they went into this in some detail. You'll find that, that video on the web. Right, I'm going to carry on now and ask um, Narisha if you can come online and um, talk us through the first year experience. Narisha, are you here? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to UKZN. And more specifically, uh, we are so delighted to have you in the College of Agriculture, Engineering and Science. I've seen a lot of people complain that their data is running out. So I'm going to try and be as quick as possible. Um, so today, um, as Dr. Frost has mentioned, I am going to talk to you about the first year experience. Let me quickly put my video off and share. Okay, I'm Narisha Haricharan and um, I'm going to talk to you about the first year experience. I'm sure this morning has felt like this. Uh, everyone's had in, uh, information overload. So I apologize if I'm contributing to that. Uh, but the first year experience is a really important module. Uh, it's a year long module that every single first year student has to uh, take. Um, the aim of the program is to make you um, feel you know, adjusted to university life. So that transition to life at university is the main aim of the program. And the program is designed to equip you with critical academic and psychosocial skills for success. So why did we design this program? Um, many studies have shown that students drop out in the first year of university and some of the factors that contribute to that are institutional factors, um, you know, the institutional culture and people feel alienated from it, uh, psychosocial issues, 
um, such as interpersonal um, conflict and uh, mental health issues, uh, financial issues, uh, as well as academic issues. So students have uh, problems in those areas. Sometimes it's one, sometimes there are many factors that contribute to that. And so the FYE is a comprehensive uh, orientation and support program that seeks to address these factors and help you to have a successful journey at university. So what is the FYE program? It comprises of these four units, which you will do, as I said, throughout the year. Unit one is the orientation and induction unit. And I will take you through uh, that uh, section in a, in a bit. Unit two is the academic skills development unit. Uh, unit three is the student wellness and global citizenship and sustainability awareness unit. And unit four deals with financial literacy. In unit one, these are the aspects that we will look at. We will take you through all uh, of the digital literacy training that you need uh, to successfully learn online. We will take you through the college handbook. It's very important for you to learn, um, to understand what some of those uh, concepts are and how to use the handbook, how to use it to register accurately, et cetera. We'll uh, take you through the lecture timetable, uh, how to construct your own lecture timetable, and we are going to have library orientation. Uh, unit two looks at all those academic skills that are required for you to successfully complete your uh, degree. So academic writing, effective note-taking, et cetera. Unit three um, deals with the uh, personal and professional development and all of the uh, subsections are there. And we've also um, included the global citizenship and sustainability awareness section, uh, which looks at things like civic responsibility, et cetera. Unit four is really important. Uh, you will learn about how to handle your finances so that uh, you don't run into problems later on in the year, um, that you learn skills like budgeting and all of those uh, aspects. So how is the, the module delivered? We, are, we have mounted the module on the FYE website. I will take you through that in a minute. Uh, all of the content is self-directed. Uh, you work through the content at your own pace. Um, and if you run into issues, uh, you know, navigating through there, you can ask your mentors for assistance. If you go through a particular section and um, you don't quite understand what's going on, your mentors will assist you with that. And in uh, section three, uh, we have the uh, special staff from the student support services to help you with that unit because there are some personal issues that uh, you may have uh, to deal with in that unit. Okay, so the FYE program is situated in the Office of the Dean of Teaching and Learning and is managed by the heads of the teaching and learning units. And uh, we have coordinators in each campus and they are in charge of the mentors. On Westville is Clarissa Naidu, on Howard is Ntuba Ankasi, and Peter Marisberg is Sarisha Gangaram. Our administrator is Tembelikle uh, Mklali and she uh, can be contacted on this email address if you want to uh, take a photo of that so that you have that address with you. Um, please do that. Um, so the program, as I said, is self-directed. So you will go through the content on the website. However, there are wellness mentors that are assigned to every single student, and they will help you if you have any issues. Now, these uh, wellness mentors are assigned to you once you have accepted your offer 
So it's an automatic process. However, if you have um, accepted your offer and you still have not been assigned a wellness mentor, please send an email to Timberlichle and we will try and sort that out. Okay, so now we're going on to the module itself. So the preferred browsers for the module is the uh, Chrome, Firefox, or Edge. So you can use any one of those. And this is the um, address that you will use to put into those browsers. So it's uh, fye.ukzn.ac.za. Once you uh, get into that, uh, get to that site, you will see this homepage and you will click on uh, first year experience. Now, if you have provided an email address on your application, um, you have been enrolled into the module. So your enrollment is automatic. You've been enrolled into the module and you log in with your student number, okay? Uh, if you have uh, do not have an email address on your application form, then you must seek assistance from your mentor. And you will come to this login screen Okay, enter your student number. If you do not know your password and you've forgotten your password, then click on that link where it says uh, forgotten username or password and it will be resent to your email address. So once you have done that, you come into the screen here, uh, which is the first year experience uh, home screen. And I am going to take you to the site now. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I want to let you know that you need to do for this week, sections A through to D for this week. This is the orientation week. Next week, you will do section E and F. And in the third week, you'll do G and H. I will send this presentation to you via your mentors so you have a record of this. I'm going to show you now the uh, website itself. Okay, so when you get to this uh, site, you'll find that the module is, is on here. It is uh, very easy to navigate. Okay. Um, you'll come to this section and it has prompts. So for example, click here to start, okay? So it'll take you through, go through sections A through to D. It is very easy to navigate and there are lo there's loads and loads of information that is very important for you. Specifically, this section B, which is the digital literacy section, this is really important for you to go through because you will be doing your lectures online for the first semester. So it's important for you to know how to go through um, to access your information on Moodle, uh, looking at things such as um, passwords and changing passwords, etc. Okay, so the pre-registration, you can see on the left-hand side here, you've got these tabs. On the pre-registration section, is um, mainly on how to navigate Zoom, how to use Zoom. Many of your lecturers will be using Zoom, okay? In the post-registration section is very important. There is a section on using Moodle, which is our learning management system. And it's super important for you to go through this. Here, there's a video. There are so many resources in this section. Please go through it. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for you to do that. You will earn badges as you go along and work through each section. And as I said, if you have issues, please contact your mentors, okay? Uh, so that is it for the FYE. Please uh, lean on your mentors. Your mentors are, um, you know, they've been there, they've done that, they've got the t-shirt. So please, um, make contact with your mentors and and if you have any issues please ask them okay thank you very much back to you dr frost 
Thanks very much, um, Marisha. And I've just been checking messages and a notice has just come out from the university about data. So I see there are quite a few questions in the chat. When am I getting my data? So once you have accepted your offer, data is allocated twice a week. So depending when you accepted your offer, it will come out um, at the beginning of the week and the middle of the week. So if you haven't got your data, please be patient. Uh, but it will be an automatic process. You will get it in due course once you have accepted your offer. Right, um, let's carry on to the next section. Um, so I'd like to call on Ashwin. Ashwin um, will be talking to you about academic advice. Uh, Ashwin, over to you. Uh, good day, Sally, thank you. Um... Okay, uh, good day students. Uh, my name is, is Mr. Ashwin Manivo, and I'm one of the principal ADOs, academic development officers in, in this college, College of Agriculture, Engineering and Science. I'm based on the Peter Maritzburg campus, and um, my schools that I deal with is, is the schools of agriculture, earth, environmental sciences, and chemistry and physics. I have a little bit of a, of a sore throat this morning, so I do apologize upfront if I'm a little bit soft, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna continue from here. Okay, so the topic I'm going to present on today to you is, is, is an extremely important topic. It's one about academic advising, right? So this has to do with your curriculum. It has to do with the modules you choose. And um, when you're doing this, the, this process of choosing your modules and finding your curriculum, it's extremely important that you know where you belong as a student, right? So UKZN is a big institution. Um, the, the word u university derives from unity and diversity. So university, a unity and diversity. And that diversity comes from the different colleges that we have. We have College of Agriculture and Engineering and Science, College of Health Sciences, College of Humanities, College of Law and Management Studies. But it's, it's important that you guys understand that you belong to the College of Agriculture, Engineering and Science. Yesterday, I had a student email me from a different college and is asking me questions and then suddenly I realized to, I, to ask him, you know, which college did you belong to? And then he tells me a different college. So he was confused about the college. So I don't want you to be in that position. So straight up front, you belong to the College of Agriculture, Engineering and Science. Within this college, we have five schools. The School of Agriculture, Earth Environmental Science, School of Chemistry and Physics, the School of Life Sciences, the School of Math Stats, uh, Computer Science, and the School of Engineering. So, the most important thing when you're figuring out your curriculum or figuring out the, the modules that you're going to choose for your first year is that you understand the qualification that you've chosen, right? You've got to know the qualification. The qualification is a degree for what you have applied for, that you've been accepted into, and for which you will be registering. Um, the major or the stream is the branch of the qualification that you choose to specialize in. So the major or the stream is not the qualification itself, but is a subset of that qualification. And then you have modules, are the courses that you will study, uh, the modules are the courses you will study, qualifications have specific modules within them, and there's a specific number of credits that will need to be done. So uh, modules themselves have something called credits associated with them. Every time you pass a module, you get some credits. And so you need a certain number of credits to get a degree, a specific degree, and uh, you need a certain uh, type of modules to satisfy to have the degree. And so modules and majors belong to schools. And as explained in the previous slide, there are five schools. So what I'm gonna do now is, is, is I'm going to touch on the structure of the qualification, the rules and requirements. I'm not gonna go too much in depth, but just uh, touch it on the surface. So essentially what I've done in this slide, if you belong to this college, you will be doing one of these qualifications, right? So these are all of the qualifications in our handbook. Um, we have the Bachelor of Science, the BSc, which is a three-year degree. We have two types. We have the focused programs and we have the general BSc. The focused program is a program that is, uh, it's, 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 it's tailor-made to touch certain areas in, in the industry, okay? It's, it's, it's focused within a specific area in the industry. 
And it's a very fixed program. So the modules are well-defined within it. But general BSc, the student has a little bit of freedom to choose majors. And so the general BSc comes with, 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 uh, with, uh, with a large list of majors, which you can pick. And these majors will fall into uh, two different streams, LES stream and M stream. So M stream is, I call it the math heavy stream. So the, 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 these, are the, these are the majors that require the difficult maths, like your computer science, and if you majored in applied mathematics, things like that. And then you have your LES stream, right? Life and Earth, uh, uh, Earth Sciences. This is your biochemistry, your biology. So um, one stream is math heavy, and I, we, we can say one stream is math light. Um, and so you can have a double major within your general, uh, the BSc. For example, you can have chemistry and, and biochemistry. Then there are other degrees such as engineering, which is, uh, which is a, in generally a fixed program, right? Your modules are well-defined up front. Very, very hard to make a mistake with the curriculum here. Uh, if you know that you are an engineering student, then you go to our college handbook and you uh, look within the engineering section and your modules are there for you, which modules you should study. The Bachelor of Science in Agriculture is also a well-defined degree. In the modules, it's fixed within the program. And then the other qualifications in blue that I've put on the right, their modules are also fixed. So um, as I mentioned to you, there's something called a college handbook. Now, this is extremely important, right? UKZN has college handbooks for every college. The college handbook has a rules for qualifications. They have uh, the qualifications. They have the modules that, 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 that these qualifications are made up of. They have the description of the modules. They have the credits of the modules, the semesters of the modules. So from an academic perspective, it is very important that you as a student in this college, pick up the handbook and, and it must be familiar to you. You must be able to go to the, your qualification. You must be able to go to your modules and you must do some reading to learn about them. Right? And also you must know the rules of your qualification. Uh, which, which rules work, are working for you, which, uh, which rules require you to have so many credits and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is because the, the, the engineering, the agriculture and these degrees in blue, because they are kind of fixed, it's really, really difficult for you to make a mistake with picking modules here. Okay. As long as you know your qualification and you find it in the handbook with those qualifications, you're fine. The problem tends to be with the general BSc. And so what I'm going to do, because the general BSc has... Uh, possible multiple ma different majors, I'm going to zoom in on the general BSc, okay? And, the, and I'm going to tell you a bit about that. I'm going to help those students in the general BSc uh, just to explain to them how to uh, pick their modules. And so the total credit value, so I'm only talking about the general BSc in there, right? I'm zooming into it. So the total credit value of at least 384 credits, you got to have to finish the degree. So if you're doing a BSc, you need 384 credits at the end. You must have at least 96 level one with a maximum of 160 credits at level one. So you can't go above 160 credits at level one, right? You must have at least 96 credits level two and at least 128 credits level three. There's something called elective modules. Now elective modules are modules that are not defined within your major. So for example, uh, when you, I'm going to show you how to use the handbook to get to your majors, but when you do get there, you may find that three out of four modules are well-defined and a fourth module is called an elective, right? These are modules you can freely pick um, from our college and also other colleges, but they are unspecified credits. And this is important. You can only do a maximum of 32 credits outside of our college, okay? And those credits must be specified at level one. So students must pass or obtain credits for Zulu 101, unless otherwise exempted. So if you did Zulu at school to a proficient level, then uh, you can be exempted from doing Zulu 101 at university. Uh, and you obviously you'll have to fill those credits up with something else because you need the 384 credits, right? But if you're a student who does not have an exemption, you must do Zulu 101. This is important, okay? Uh, you don't want to be in a situation where you complete your degree, you do well, you get Dean's commendation. And then you come to the end and all your modules are finished and you realize you don't have Zulu and you're going to spend an extra six months getting the Zulu. So it's very important you consider this upfront. And so very quickly, um, if a BSc is 384 credits using the minimum maximum rules I showed you before, you can have different spreads at level one, two, and three. You can have 160, 96, or 128. 
Uh, 144, 112, 128, and 128 to 128. I'm not going to dwell too much in this, but this might, this is, you're not very familiar with this, right? When you have the when you see this presentation again, you will be able to go back to it and make more sense of it. So these these are the the majors in our within the general BSc, right? So I'm, I've taken these from the handbook, all of them. These are the different majors, and on the right column, I've put the school that they're associated with. So you'll also see here that you can have a major in economics and psychology, but this is extremely important, right? Economics and psychology don't belong to our college. And so this has consequences. This means that your economics and psychology can only ever be a secondary major. So, so when you major in two things, one thing is the primary major, the other is the secondary. Your primary major must be a major in our college. So for example, if you major in, 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 uh, in biochemistry, that can be a primary major, right? Economics cannot be, and psychology cannot be. And so what I'm gonna do now, really quickly, is I'm gonna go through an example, a kind of worked example, of how you would figure out your curriculum using the handbook. As I said, the most important tool that you have as a student in this college is the handbook, okay? So questions you'll ask yourself and statements, uh, what is my qualification? Uh, how would I find it in the handbook? How would I find the modules in the handbook? How would I figure out which semester modules belong to? How would I uh, figure out how many credits each module is so that I can add them up to get normal credit load? What is normal credit load? Uh, how do I figure out which electives to take? How do I, uh, uh, how do I figure out if these modules are going to clash on the timetable? You must remember something, students. There's a policy at UKZ and we cannot allow students to do modules that clash on the timetable. If they clash on the timetable, those modules are fighting for precious time, okay? And you can't be in two places at, 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 at the same time. So you cannot take modules that clash. Um, and how do I make sure that Zulu is being considered? And so, <clears throat> so in this slide, the example I'm going to work with is a BSc alias chemistry and biochemistry, right? And we're going to answer questions. What is my qualification? How do I find it in the handbook? And how do I find the module? So you will have a PDF copy of the handbook. Where can you get this copy from? Well, you can get it from UKZN's website. I mean, you can go to Google. You can just go to Google and type in UKZN, uh, CAES, uh, College Handbook, and it will come up, 2022 ha handbook, right? Uh, the handbook will be distributed to you. I'm sure that when, when your mentors will, will be able to send these to you, part of the material that they will share with you. Um, yeah, so the handbook is a really simple, simple thing to find, but you have to go looking for it, right? Um, when you have the handbook as a PDF, you'll be able to search the handbook. So you have a search text function. So use the search text function. If you're looking for biochemistry, put biochemistry in and search for it. And as you begin to search, you'll come across all the places the word biochemistry is used. And then you will come to the general BSc where biochemistry is one of the majors. And so I've got a reference here to our college handbook, 2022, page 91. Both of these majors are found on that page, biochemistry, chemistry. And so these two blocks now are showing me the modules I need to do, showing me the core modules I need to do in order to have this degree. And so what I, so, so what I will do if I was a biochemistry, chemistry student, is I would look at year one, forget about the other years, right? Don't, don't confuse yourself too much with the other years. Make sure if this campus uh, specific specializations, you take that into account. And then you look at year one and then you begin to, ch to choose to write the modules down. You see at the bottom here, I got core modules level one. So I'll take my pen and write down biology 101. I write on chemistry 110, chemistry 120, the math 150, the physics 131. Then I will come to my chemistry degree. If there's any modules that are common, okay, I've already written them down. I'll write down the modules that are obviously specific to this chemistry degree. And what I've come up is one comprehensive list of core modules that I need for a biochemistry and chemistry degree, right? Core modules at the level one. And so the next thing I need to do with these core modules is I need to figure out which semester they belong to. Because remember, when you look at this, there's no semester shown and this can confuse you, right? So what you'll need to do is you need to go to the module description in the handbook. When I say module description, I mean, you go to your search function again, you know, find the text or search for specific text and you type in biology 101. Then you go searching everywhere where biology 101 is. Now you might be in a few places 
But sooner or later, you're going to come to something like this. Now, this is not for biology 101. This is for computer 106. This is just an example. This is an example of a description of a module in the handbook. But what's important is I've circled two, two areas here that you can see, right? Next to the code, comp 106, you can see a P2, W2. The P2 and W2 means that this module is offered in the second semester on the Peter Maritzburg and the Westville campus, right? The 16C at the end means that this module is worth 16 credits. So two important pieces of information you're getting from here. Number one is the credits. Number two is the semester, okay, and the campus. Three important pieces of information. Then you do this for every module, and then you split your modules up semester one, semester two. Now you know which modules are in each semester, and you can add the credits up. And you notice semester one is 64 credits. 64 credit students at UKZN under the BSc degree is a normal credit load. Now other qualifications like engineering will have a different normal credit load, right? But um, the, the, under this degree, 64 credits, normal credit load. In semester two, when I add my credits up, you can see maths 143 and physics 133 are eight credit modules, right? So I have 48 credits, I'm short 16 because I need 64 for normal credit load, remember? So what I'll have to do is I'll have to choose an elective. And so for me, I'm, I'm not a very, I'm a fluent in Zulu. I didn't do Zulu at school. So the, the, the common sense thing for me to do was, will be to pick the Zulu 101 and do it in semester two so that I know I'm done with, with that module, right? That needs to be done. Now, the next thing you will need to do is make sure nothing clashes. Now, if they were within your, uh, the core modules, they, they shouldn't clash, but it's always good practice to work from ab initio, right? To work from first principles. Go back to your timetable. Uh, you will need to check your timetable. You will need to check the, uh, the timetable uh, uh, blocks, which letter it belongs to, and make sure none of, the, none of the modules clash. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a video for you on the timetable. I, I know that it hasn't been done today, may not be done today. So I'm going to play a short video. Uh, Sally, is that, is, is that fine? Is this in order? Yes, please do, Ashwin. Okay, and this video now, when you're watching it, it, there's a lot of information here on this video. It's going to show you how to download your timetables, how to figure things out. But what I want you to look at is I want you to look at when the module codes appear, there's brackets and then there's a letter in the module code. That letter in the module code is the timetable block. You cannot have modules that have the same letter, the same timetable block, right? So I'm going to stop sharing this. And I'm going to share... The orientation time video. Okay, I need to share with sound. My apologies. Hi. The purpose of this instructional video is to show you exactly. Okay, so the volume in this video is a bit slow because it was mixed that way, right? So I need you on your side, students to pick the volume of your Zoom app and the volume of your device app. Thank you. What you need to know and no more to download your timetables for your um, classes at UKZN. The reason why uh, this video is here is because it is quite a complex system online, with all sorts of options and links all over the place. Um, and uh, it would just help to actually show you visually exactly what you need to do. Um, although we are during, uh, going through a pandemic at the moment, um, the timetable is still very useful because your lecturers might need you to be at a certain location at the same time. For example, an assessment or some kind of workshop or even a Zoom class session. So although we're not on, all on campus, um, we still do need to use the timetable system to avoid standing on each other's toes. Okay, so I'm going to tell you how to find it, the uh, timetable website, and I'm going to show you how to use it to download the timetables for each of your modules. Okay, so how to find it? There are two ways. The one way is to navigate from the UKZN website, right? So www.ukzn.org.za. Um, and 
www.ac.za. Um, and uh, you will see links everywhere, at menus and all sorts of bits of things about registration and orientation, etc., etc., etc. But the, the lecture timetable is what you're after. So academic calendar, for example, is not what you're after. That is professional dates of the various campuses. So the easiest way to get there from the UKZN website, um, regardless of which campus you're on, click on the student portal link right up at the top of the page it's on the mobile version as well. And here you will see the student portal with all sorts of student related resources. And uh, on the left, you can see lecture timetables quite clearly. All right. Um, don't confuse this with examination timetables, lecture timetables. Now that will take you to a website, timetables and venue bookings. Okay, that is your, this is your destination. Um, the other way to get there, if you can remember, is you just type the, uh, the, the address of the website into your browser, which is very simply timetable.ukzn.com dot ac dot z a okay all right so now that we have found the timetabling system um, let's have a look at how to generate and download the timetable for your modules okay so as you are aware there are um, lots of campuses you can see the the campuses listed in the menu here as you hold your mouse over the menu item for a given campus you'll see various links. I'm just going to show you um, the important ones, general information and semester mod one module and semester two modules. Peter Marisburg, same thing. Edgewood, you know, each campus has their own um, timetable. So, uh, Westville. Okay. The, uh, the links we're looking, that we're interested in is obviously semester one modules and the general information link as well. So um, I'll talk about that at the end. We click on semester one modules, and here you can see we are at a site, the, the, the page that says Wasteful Campus 2021 module semester one. There's some dates there, some sessional dates. Some of them have probably changed a bit by now. And below that, you will see the, the various programs, okay? So all the various schools and faculties in our college, I mean uh, uh, disciplines in our college, and uh, I'm going to demonstrate science and agriculture semester one. So whichever um, college you're in, uh, you click on the link. Okay, so here we have um, the cell cat uh, um, timetabling system, right? The, there are two, uh, and, and this is how where we're going to download our timetables from. You can see there's a link in the center of the page called Web Timetable, okay? And there's another one at the top of the page called Timetable Finder, okay? So these are two different ways, slightly different ways of achieving the same end um, and what you want at the end is a PDF timetable uh, file that you download. It's a PDF document of the timetable for each of your modules. Okay, so let's try the timetable finder first. Right, so we get here, yeah, you can see a time, the, the heading. You can see some links here that help you filter the content. If you click on help, it will give you uh, some basic instructions. I'm going to click back and I'm just going to say I want all the modules. So here you'll see it's listing modules in a long list. Okay, you can narrow that down, you can um, restrict it by department, okay, math, stats, and computer science, for example, and then it will just show you the modules from that school um, or by faculty. In this case, we are only looking at the AES stuff anyway. So, um, nonetheless, if you leave, if you click all for everything, it's just going to show you one long list, and that might be good enough 
for you to just scroll down and find the module, the modules that uh, you've been registered for. So uh, if you're a computer science mod uh, student in first year, you can click on Comp 100, and there you see the PDF file, which you can download, or you can download it there. Um, notice there's more than one page. It shows the days, and if uh, we zoom in a bit, uh, so you can see the details. Uh, the lecture slots, it tells you which week. It gives you the dates, um, the course code, the campus, um, the title of the course. Uh, if we were on campus, which venue you would be using, um, and the, the directions. And uh, um, yes, uh, you'll see you probably have two or maybe three lecture slots per week. Then there will be practice. Um, for most of the courses. Pracs are typically labeled that way, so it'll tell you it's a prac period. Um, again, similar data. Uh, and uh, for many courses, there's um, more than one slot. So there's a slot here on the Monday and a slot on the Thursday. Uh, you go by the one that your lecturer chooses. So your lecturer might choose both uh, if your class is really large. Uh, you need to find that out from the lecturer. So that is um, that timetable for that module, right, Comp 100. So to get, you can then download it. Then to get a module for an, uh, um, a timetable for another module, so let's say you want to do um, uh, your stats. Um, so stats 130, okay. So you could click on it and it will go to, you know, the page, that, similar page that you just saw. Um, but if you don't want to, uh, uh, if you already know what you want and you know it's the right code, you just click on that link there, PDF version. And it will either download the PDF or open it into your browser um, as, uh, as it's just done on my system. You can always click on the download link there if you want a copy. So um, it's a simple case of clicking on the module um, link uh, to get the timetable for that module. Okay, so there was, as, as we saw, there was one other way of doing it, the web timetable. So this is a, a um, maybe a more browser-friendly way of doing it, whereas the timetable finder, I think, is, is better for mobile phones and small devices. Right, the web timetable, uh, here we go, the one you should probably try first, and failing that, use the timetable finder because it gives you a nice list. Um, and you can say, for example, select modules, and it preloads all the names. So you just start typing. If I type comp 100, there you go. There it is. And uh, as I select that module, there's my timetable. I can then download it from there. Okay, and that's it. So you download them and save them to your machine or your device, and those, that's your timetable uh, for that module. Okay. Right, so I did mention there, uh, and to end, uh, there is one general information page uh, that has some documents. If you uh, <coughs> are interested, the module blocks, in other words, which subjects are in which block in case, for example, you might want to change your curriculum to a subject, another subject that hopefully doesn't clash with any of your existing subjects, um, you can check uh, with that document. Uh, there are two sessional calendars. I think they might be a bit out to date, but most of the public holidays and that sort of thing will still be okay, and I'm sure they will be updated soon. Uh, and. Uh, the, this document, Westville, using the web timetable, is a document that outlines what I just showed you on the timetable website. And finally, the Westville timetable information booklet is a, it will give you a lot more information about timetabling and the timetable system. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you found this video informative um, and enjoy your day further. Bye.
Okay, so that uh, that that was the timetables video, right? So th that video is found uh, on our orientation website. You can uh, you you can go to the orientation website under student information. If you want to watch that video again, you can watch it again, right? So I'm going to quickly come back to my presentation. So the whole idea of that um, video was to show you uh, that there's blocks that modules belong to, and you cannot choose modules that belong to the same timetable block, right? Now, I haven't put timetable blocks here, but when you're doing yours, you will have to do that. Um, okay, so what I've done in this slide is I've just put a list of common electives students may choose. You can choose electives within our college. You can choose electives outside. Remember the restriction on the number of credits outside, 32 credits, and they can only ever represent themselves at level one, right? Uh, so you've got credit restrictions on electives. You've got, uh, uh, you, you can't do electives that are clashing the timetable with your core modules, but there is another restriction you need to watch for. If you see this description of copied of Comp 106, you'll see at the bottom there's an area I've circled. Right, it says credit may not be obtained for both Comp 106 and Comp 100. Now this is extremely important, right? Sometimes modules share content. And if the content they share is of a substantial percentage, then credit cannot be awarded for both the modules. Right? That's, that, that's a common sense. So when you look at modules and you're taking electives, make sure that you look at the bottom to see, be aware of modules where credit cannot be obtained together. Okay, don't... Uh, do your degree and then come to the end and realize that, oh my word, I've got two modules here that make up the 384, but um, I can't have both of them because they can't be obtained together, right? That's one restriction you need to you need to watch for. This list I've put up here is not an exhaustive list. There's other modules. These are just common electives. Uh, but when choosing electives, you must also watch out for situations where, okay. for example, students can take Nutrition 114 as an elective. Uh, this is just an example, but they can't take condition one, two, four. That won't be allowed. So certain disciplines uh, only offer uh, modules for their for, for their specific qualification. And uh, th this information you can get from academics uh, when you get your academic advising, right? And the ADOs as well. Um, I'm just going to touch very quickly on augmented students. So augmented students are students who will have their first year stretch over two years. It's, it's, so the, the degree will last, the BSc will last four years. Your module selection is very simple. So if you go to page 76 of the 2022 handbook, you'll see that the modules that augmented students have to do are all the 195 modules, Biology 195, Chem 195, Math 195, Physics 195, and then ESCOM 101 and ESCOM 102 in each semester, right? So really, really simple. Um, for augmented selection of the modules for, for the augmented. Um, okay, so this, this part is, is very important. So what the college has done for this week is we've created Zoom sessions that US students can go to and get academic advice. So the first of all, you, you have to go to the handbook, right? Go to the handbook, look at your qualification, look at your modules, try to figure things out as I've shown you here, work, work step by step. And there may be a situation where you, you, you may want to check your elective. Or there may be a situation where you want to make sure your curriculum is fine. So you can go to your specific school. Uh, remember, there's five schools. So we've created five, uh, five Zoom links. These links run from the 7th to the 10th of Feb. Uh, and they run from 9 in the morning to 4 uh, in, in the afternoon. And there's academics, right? Lecturers sitting in those links. And you can go to them and they will help you with this curriculum advice. Now, it's uh, important that you know which school you belong to. So what I'm going to do, what I've done is I've prepared a document, right? So this, this document is going to be shared with you through your mentors. This is a PDF. It has all of the Zoom links in it. This is going to be sent to you through your mentors, right? And I will ask Sally to upload as well on, on the orientation website. But it has a table for each of the qualifications and each of the majors, it has a qualification to which school you belong to. Now, this is extremely important because remember, there's five Zoom links for academic advising. Each link is for a school. Specific academics in that school are going there. If you go to the wrong school, you're going to wait in the line, right, for a long time for nothing. You're going to waste your time. Uh, you're also going to cause congestion within the rooms when you're talking to the academics. So it's extremely important 
that you are able to link your qualification to a school. And this document is going to help you do that. So if you're doing a BSc chemistry, then you know I've got to go to SCP's link. If you're doing plant pathology, then you know you've got to go to CSIS link and so on and, 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 and so forth, right? Uh, you can, uh, that will be sent to you and that will also be shared on the orientation website. So I'm just going to quickly finish up my PowerPoint uh, presentation for you now. Um, just one more thing. This example that I use is for a BSc. So when I was talking about normal credit load being 64 and things like that, that is for a BSc, right? If you are doing engineering, the normal credit load is different. The rules are different. So I urge you to read the rules, to find all of those things out within the handbook for your qualification, right? Okay, and finally, uh, these are a list of ADOs. Um, we have ADOs of academic development officers, right? These guys um, assist with the, with the academic advising. So they can also help you with, uh, with academic advising. Uh, these are their details and, and their office numbers here. We have Godfrey Mary Murray and Howard College, and myself in Nozipo on Peter Maritzburg, and then there's Dahlia and Yameka and Roger on the Westville campus, and these are the different schools. Uh, of course, you can get a hold of any of us and we'll refer you between us, but you can also look at the schools, figure out your qualification, and approach the ADO per campus. Um, but it's important this week that you attend these sessions, right? These sessions are being hosted by uh, academics and they only last until the 10th but the ADOs I mean you can come to us throughout the whole year and we'll be able to uh, to assist you so I hope this presentation has been useful to you and I'll hand over to Sally from here thank you okay thanks very much um, Ashwin and uh, please I want to emphasize those links that Ashwin has just shared with you are on the orientation website please go there um, to get assistance. I see in the Q&A in the chats, there are lots of very specific individual questions. I'm having a problem with this, I'm having a problem with that. We are unable to answer those questions at this session. Um, it's not the purpose of this session. Uh, those are very specific questions. So please go to those Zoom links. They are open all week and there's someone there who will be able to help you. Um, those links are on the orientation website. Uh, you can Google case orientation if you missed it and go into that link. It's open all day, all week, and people will help you with your very specific questions. Okay, we have five minutes left. So, Roger, and you'll have to speak super quick if you can take us through practicals. Okay, no problem. <laughs> all right, good morning, everyone. Um, I've been given uh, literally five minutes. I will try my best to um, actually uh, cover everything uh, within this five minutes. I'm not sure if you can see my screen uh, with the- Yes, we can, we can. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so what I'm gonna cover with you today, it's basically um, just a, a practical scheduling system that we've created. Uh, you are actually one of the first people to be using the system because it's uh, under construction and then it will set to launch with uh, this cohort as the first users. So what uh, we have, um, I don't know uh, today, but you can check on the, on the um, video for life for yesterday and uh, we had a lady from ICS Lungi who explained to you uh, about uh, how you can create your own password and I believe even Aussie also mentioned something about that how to can create your own password and then uh, you're going to have your own username and password for everything that is UK then related and then remember your username is always a student number and your password that you're going to create when you are registering that will be your password that you're going to be using throughout everything that is UK then related so same thing now with the practical uh, website um which we are currently uh, uh, finishing with ICS. This is a demo website. So don't worry about copying uh, this link here because it's gonna change. When we send it to you, this will not work anymore. Uh, we're gonna move to another one which ICS is busy setting up, setting for us. So once you, look, you open that practical website, uh, it's gonna give you a page like this. And then there, you will uh, uh, you will obviously put your login details. You're gonna put your student number, 
and then you're gonna post you're gonna put as well your password which you're gonna create uh, i believe if you haven't done that uh, before you register you definitely gonna need to create your own password and then you put your password in there and then once you click on login you will be on a page like this right and then here on you're gonna display your picture so basically this picture of yours will it's gonna be displayed it's gonna be taken once you finish your registration you go to ics for your student card you're gonna have your own picture there and then obviously you in your case, your name will obviously appear there and then you'll see that this is your practical um, lab tutorial. And then one other thing that I need to mention, as soon as you register, let's say you register for four or five modules, whatever number of modules you're gonna register for this semester, uh, 24 hours later, your modules will be obviously updated everywhere in the system, in your Moodle, in your, in, on your practical website, everywhere, your, details will be updated 24 hours later. So even here as well, your modules will be updated 24 hours after you register. Okay. Now, once it comes here, once your modules comes here, the system will automatically put you in a different grouping. So for example, for if you're doing four modules, let's just go, okay. I'm gonna show you what I'm trying to say now. Uh, this is the main dashboard. So it's what we have now. And then you're gonna have your lab timetable, which is what I'm gonna to talk to you about. And then the other functionality, we wanna disable them for now uh, because they are not uh, useful to you yet. So let's just speak to what is useful to you for now. It's the lab timetable. So once you come here, and since this is a demo purpose uh, for, it's a, for demonstration, I'm just gonna select 2021 because that's where we put the module for this student. But for you, obviously you're gonna put 2022 and then you're gonna select uh, the first semester. But for me, I'm gonna select semester two because it's just a demonstration purpose. And once you've done that, you click on show timetable. Now here, all your modules will be showing. Uh, for this student, for example, you see these four modules are showing. And then you see that the student is allocated in group one for this module, in group one for this module and so forth. That does not mean for you it's gonna be the same thing. For you, the group obviously will change based on the size of the venue for each prac. Let's say for example, this prac can only have 50 people at this time, and this one can have 20 people at the time. So this one will full quickly, and this one will have fewer groups, and this one will have many groups, but you will just gonna select, I mean, you were just gonna pick up your group number, uh, the venue of the prac, and then who's gonna be your instructor, and obviously what time is the prac running, okay? So here you need to know that the practicals usually run either morning, uh, three to four period, and one period is uh, 45 minutes. And then, uh, so that means, for example, when they say uh, Wednesday a.m., that will mean this prac will go, usually start at 8.40 all the way to, I think just around 12, 12, 10, or just before 12, 11, 30 or some, somewhere there. So that's usually the morning session. And the av uh, afternoon session will go from 10 past two all the way to four, half past four, or sometimes 5 p.m., depending obviously of the length of your practical that you're doing on that particular day. Uh, and then one other thing that I need to tell you is that for each module, you go to the lab once a per week, unless otherwise stated by your course coordinator. And also, <clears throat> sorry, uh, yeah, and also, uh, so you go once a day, uh, once per week, I mean, uh, in the lab for one module. And also, we don't have practicals for the first week of class. Uh, the practical usually starts the second or third week of class. Uh, so you need to be in class in the first week. So they will tell you everything about the practice and let you know when exactly the practice will start. And then uh, you start it from there. So now once you have your timetable like this, you can either download it as an Excel, copy it and paste it wherever you want it to be copied, download it as a PDF and save it wherever you want, or you can print it obviously, and then you uh, stick it in your wall or anything, uh, anywhere else that is easy for you to be following. Okay, bear in mind that uh, this time, uh, sometimes for let's say for modules like Geog 110, you might have so many sessions in a week, like you're gonna have a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all, to, all the way to Friday sessions, doesn't mean that you attend everything. You're gonna follow yours particularly, uh, because obviously there's a large number of people in class, they try to split it into smaller groups. Okay, and then the other functionalities are not useful to you yet, the tutorial timetable, we're not gonna be using it for this semester, but second semester we will be using it. And then we're gonna obviously make a presentation for you then. And then the other 
ones as well and uh, when they are ready we're going to make a presentation to you the only thing that is important to you now is this timetable or for your practicals where to find it and then how to see and then how to know when is the prep running it's a i mean when they say am you know it's morning and it's usually start 8 40 but attend class the first week you're going to receive a course um the template of the course um content where they're going to tell you exactly how many pregs you're going to have the semester when is uh, the prep starting what time are the pregs and how long are each prep so i believe in my five minutes i went just two minutes <laughs> over thank you that was super speedy speaking <laughs> thank you okay thanks very much um students we've reached the end of our time allocation so i um, need to bring the session to a close I see there are lots of questions still. Please go onto the or orientation site, so Google case orientation. Click on the videos. There's the video of yesterday's session. A lot of your questions are answered. And please, for the very specific questions you have about your own personal registration, go into those Zoom links. Um, they are on the orientation site as well, and there will be someone to help you individually. Um, Bobby, do you want to have a final few words before I close the session. Uh, no, I think Bobby has gone. Okay, so I'm going to bring this session to a close. Um, good luck students, don't panic. I know it's very stressful and it seems overwhelming. Um, go to those Zoom sessions where there will be someone to answer your specific questions. Otherwise, good luck and um, we are here to help you. Uh, go to the website, you will find email addresses for people to help you. Okay, I'm going to close the session now and thanks everyone for coming and for participating. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>